Good day. This is video number six in the series Mastering the NCOSI System Engineering Handbook in preparation for the NCOSI System Engineering Professional Exam. Video number six covers the design definition process, section 4.5, in the NCOSI System Engineering Handbook. My name is Lance Sherry, and I will be your tour guide for this video. The INCOSI System Engineering Handbook defines the system lifecycle processes and activities that are designed to provide some structure and manage the complexity of developing very com complex systems in uh, complex development and deployment life cycles. The handbook identifies 59 processes and activities that are categorized into seven groups. And the topic of this presentation is the design definition process. As we said in the previous uh, video, is that's closely related to the architecture definition uh, process. So the learning objectives will answer the question, what is a design? Uh, describe the purpose of the design definition process. List the outputs, inputs, and process activities. Um, and then establish what are the characteristics of a well-defined system. Uh, discuss design patterns, um, discuss methods for comparing alternative designs, and then the content of the system element requirement specification that is the output of this process. So just to put things in context, um, the output of the design definition process is the system element requirement specification, and that's shown on the fourth tier of diagram 4.1. So we go from business requirements specification to stakeholder requirements specification to system requirements specification. And all of that is used to generate the system element requirements specification. One thing that's not mentioned in the NCOSI handbook is that a big part of this architecture and design process is to establish the uh, interfaces between components. And those are captured in the interface control document known as the ICD. Um, so just to take a step back um, and uh, ask the question, what is a design? Well, it's the fundamental organization of the physical implementation of the system. So this is how the system is going to be built. It's embodied in the technology components and establishes the relationship between the technology components. So previously, the architecture was kind of a technology agnostic description of the system. And now we're going to answer the question is, how will the system actually be implemented? What are the physical components? So you can see on the right hand side that now we've got our intended function flowing down to behavior, data flow and object orientation, which would all be architectural descriptions. And now based on the data flow and the object orientation models, we're going to actually come down into a physical implementation in the software, hardware or mechanical system. And that design definition would be in the form of circuit diagrams for hardware, um, some um, flow charts for, for software, or mechanical you know, CAD diagrams for mechanical components. So we really want to get down in the design process to the actual design implementation. Um, just a quick refresher on the difference between architecture and design. So architecture is technology agnostic, is design agnostic, whereas the design is going to take into account the technology, uh, the physical, structural, environmental, and operational properties, and how the, the, which technologies will actually be used in the implementation. So the um, design definition process purpose is to provide sufficient detailed data and information about the system and its elements to enable implementation consistent with architectural entities as defined in models and views of the system architecture. All right, in plain language, you're going to take your um, technology agnostic architecture that was previously defined, and you're going to convert that to a technology implementation. And you can think flow chart, you can think circuit diagram, you can think mechanical diagram. Um, so we're going to get down and really design uh, how this thing will be implemented. The process is, uh, um, has outputs, inputs, and activities, as always. Uh, the output is a system element requirement specification. 
um, that's established by coming up with alternate designs and trading off the benefits of each one. And then, of course, the inputs are all of the documents and information that came before, um, from business to stakeholder to requirements to architecture. So the system element requirement specification is typically going to be uh, diagrams uh, with associated text. Uh, but circuit diagrams, flowcharts, and mechanical diagrams would be the kinds of things that you would expect to see as a result of the design document. Um, so one of the, the questions is to make sure that all of the architectural functions, the architectural components, are captured in the design. And one of the ways to do that is to uh, develop a dependency matrix. Um, so that has the architecture functions, our components on the vertical axis, and then in the rows, and then in the columns, we've got the design components. This is the technology that will be used to implement it. And then we can check off which technological components are required in order to satisfy the architecture functions. Um, so one of the interesting things with, des with designs is that it turns out that there are some kind of common design patterns that appear. These are general reusable solutions to typical um, uh, issues or, or, uh, or designs that have to be developed. So they kind of represent a, a, a template um, for designs. And it turns out that they're the standard templates that one can reuse in, in, in most contexts. And then lastly, there is no uh, single design that emerges. There's typically multiple designs, and each of the designs have benefits over the others. And so the way that you can come up with the, the preferred design is to calculate its utility using the value hierarchy shown on the right-hand side. That is, uh, the utility is a weighted sum of the attributes of each of the designs. And then uh, use that utility on the uh, chart on the left-hand side to plot utility versus cost. And so again, we have here uh, three, uh, four design alternatives, uh, one, two, three, and four. Uh, so um, design number one has lower utility than design number two and costs less. And design number two has lower utility than design number three and costs less than number three. And so uh, one, two, and three create a, a Pareto frontier and uh, you can trade off utility versus cost um, in picking the, the best design alternative. So we've come to the end of the video, and this is an opportunity to see what you know. Um, what group of processes and activities does the design definition fall under? What document is the design definition captured in? Give a definition of system design. List three types of information used as inputs to the design definition process. What art artifact is used to map functions to technology components? What is a design pattern? And how are design alternatives evaluated? So hit the pause button here and uh, you can jot down answers to the questions. And then when you're ready, you can hit play and go to the next slide. The next slide provides some answers uh, to those questions to test yourself. Um, you can hit pause and then when you're ready, go on to the next slide. So once again, thank you for taking the time to go through the video. Uh, if you liked what you saw, if you could give us the thumbs up at the bottom of the screen, that would be great. Uh, the next video in the series is video number seven, and that's the systems analysis process.